Hey guys, it's Jamie here from 3D Scan Store. So in this workflow tutorial, we're going to look at how to apply the expressions uh, from the perspective of you having already sculpted your model um, using a different topology for ours. So if you load our base mesh, this is it here, but if you load it in, you've got two different versions, a centimeter and a meter scale base mesh, just because people work in, in different scales. Uh, we thought we'd make it easy for you. Uh, we're using the centimeter scale here because that's what scale our um, our models in. So on the base mesh itself we've got all these different morphs um, which you can use to pretty much make any expression. Um, they can be combined using layer recording uh, which I will show you in another video. Um, but basically this is our base mesh and it's got three subdivision levels. Um, it's the same base mesh that's used for all our scan store scans, uh, all our HD models. Um, and it can also be used with all of our displacement and texture map packs. So with the base mesh, we've also included a, a nice little wrapping guide. So if you go to import um, and guide and choose the guide here, you can see that we've created this little guide to help you during the wrapping process so that you can place the points in the same position and sort of roughly, you know, sort of have areas like the cheeks and the, the chin in the, in the right place so that the expressions will work with your, your model. So the first thing we're going to do is actually wrap this mesh onto our sculpted mesh, which is this one. So what we need to do now is export both our models. So we'll export our sculpt and we'll do it at subdivision level three, just so it's got enough um, you know, detail that we can sort of select points and, and wrap to. Uh, so we'll just export that. Just gonna make a new folder in my test folder here. We'll call it um, head wrap. And we'll just call this um, sculpt. And now we need to export our base mesh. So we'll just go down to the lower subdivision level one, which is um, the one we want to wrap. And I'll just turn the texture off there, the wrapping guide. And we will export that to the same folder. <clears throat> and we'll just call that base mesh. Okay, and now we'll load up wrap three. And you can do the same process in ZWrap. It's largely the same, but I'm just using wrap three because this is what I use. So we will load geometry and we'll load in our sculpt. So we'll just call that sculpt. And we'll load that in. Head wrap sculpt. And now we will load in our base mesh. Just call that base mesh. Base mesh. And we can just flick between the two. You can see roughly in the same position. It kind of, uh, if you're, it might make sense to move your sculpt into the same position as the base mesh um, rather than the other way around um, because the base mesh has all the layers and if you move the base mesh it might mess up the layer system a little bit. So let's start wrapping. So the first thing we're going to want to do is load our guide. So we'll just load an image and we'll call that guide. And we'll just go into here and select the guide and plug that into our base mesh. So now we've got the wrapping guide on our base mesh. You can actually turn the wireframe off here and just use the guide to select the points. It's a bit easier. And now we're going to do a selection, select point pairs. And we want to have the base mesh on the left and the sculpt on the right. And now we'll go into visual editor and click sync views. And now basically what we want to do is sort of select the points as accurately as we can on our base mesh um, and match them to the wrapping guide here. So the thing with this is the closer and more accurate you do this, the, um, the better the results are going to be when you transfer the expressions. So I'm just going to speed the video up here and select all these points and then we'll try the wrapping.
Okay, so that's all the points selected. Um, now what we're going to do is do a polygon selection on the base mesh. So we will do a selection, select polygons. Um, and all we're going to do with this is just select the inner mouth bag because we don't want that to uh, wrap particularly. So the best way to do this is just do a polygon selection loop. I'll just switch on wireframe so we can see. So just select a loop around the mouth there by double clicking and just do grow until it's grown enough to fill the whole mouth bag and then we'll just do a shrink and shrink it right back till it's um, kind of inside the mouth like that so now you can see we've got the mouth bag selected and that's the only polygon selection we're going to do for this model so now what we want to do is the alignment or the actual wrapping itself so we'll just select the wrapping node and we'll plug the three polygons into the polygon selection, uh, the point correspondence into point correspondence node, base mesh into the first one, and the sculpt into the second one. And now have the wrapping guide on. So now if we do a compute, you'll see this will quickly wrap this. Cool, okay. So now we've got our wrapped mesh, and you can see here, because we've got so many points selected, it's sort of pulled quite a lot of the the geometry around and made a little bit of a mess in certain areas. So we're going to use the cool, the uh, clone stamp or the clone brush now, which is in geometry and brush. And we'll plug our geometry wrapped geometry into the first one, our reference geometry, which is the original sculpt, the reference, into the reference and our source, which is our base mesh, into the uh, geometry source. And now if we use our clone tool, we can actually sort of morph these uh, loops back to how they were uh, with reference to the, the base mesh, but still preserving the um, the actual sculpt underneath or the reference geometry as it's referred to. Um, and this is great for doing areas like the eyes and stuff um, and very, very quick as well. And it's much better than the um, relax brush. There we go, and now we have the, um, the base mesh with the wrapping guide in place, so everything's in the correct position. And now all we need to do is export that. So we'll just go to brush, and I usually just right click on this, and I'll just go to. Oh, sorry, sorry, I missed that. We have to click accept on this first. So once you've done your your clone brush, just click accept. And now you can right click and you can save geometry. So we'll just put this in here and we'll call it wrapped and save. And now when we go back into ZBrush, we can select our sculpt and we can import our wrapped model. So we're just going to put a random cylinder in here so we can import it into the same sub tool and import the wrapped model. And now we've got two versions. We've got our original sculpt and we've got the wrapped model. So what we're going to do now is project the wrapped model onto the sculpt. So we will subdivide this up a few times up to maybe level three. And now we're going to store a morph target. This is useful for morphing areas back to the way they were if the projection goes a bit wrong. And we'll put the sculpt as our background layer and project and just I've got this in 0 0.02 um, I'm going to drop it down to 0 0.01 and just hit project all and now we've got some weird little areas here again we can use the, uh, the morph brush to sort of fix those or we can try and sort of sculpt them away or we can use the projection Z project which is what I often do and put the object sculpt the background and just use a manual to project just to fix those areas it's usually around the ears and the eyes that you get these projection errors and just here in the mouth as well a little 
a little nubbin that needs fixing. I'm just going to have a look on the inside of the mouth as well, so I'll just mask that area off because sometimes you know you, get, you do get quite nasty projection errors in here. So you can see here there's quite a few little bits that have gone wrong, so we'll just fix that, just smooth it out a bit. And I'm doing this very quickly here, so you know you can take a lot more time doing this. Cool, okay, that'll do. So now we can go up and we can uh, subdivide this a few more times because the sculpt has five subdivision levels. So we will just project that now at subdivision level five just to get all the details. Not that there's a lot of details on this. Uh, so we'll just uh, delete the morph target from before, store a new morph, tar morph target, and just do another project at 0 0.01. And there we have it. So that is using our base mesh now. And what we've done is transferred our sculpt details onto the 3D scan store base mesh. And you'll see if I apply the um, wrapping guide now, see it fits perfectly onto the, um, onto the sculpt, or the, the new base mesh. So now that that's done, we can really, really easily apply our expressions to the sculpt model that's been wrapped. So the way to do that is very, very simple. So you simply export the model. So we'll just export this at level five. You can export at any level you want. The thing to bear in mind is on your on the base mesh, um, it's set to level three. You can subdivide it up to level five and export at level five and import or you can import at level three. If you've got details on your model that are at a higher subdivision level, then I recommend subdividing the base mesh up to the level of your, your sculpt so you've got all the nice details. So this is level five. So let's export this at level five. So we'll export head wrap. We'll call it head level five. Okay. Now all we do is open the um, expression ZTL and all we want to do now is replace this model. So it's at level three. So like I said, subdivide it twice up to level five <clears throat> and simply import the model that you've just exported at level five. And now when we go into our layers, we can use all the expressions to deform our mesh. And it's as easy as that. So now you can go ahead and create any any sort of expression that you want really um, using these layers. And in the next video I'm going to show you how to um, combine these expressions to sort of use parts from one and you know and sort of mix and match them so you can get different areas doing different things. So hopefully from these you can more or less create any any kind of expression. So I hope this is useful and I will see you in the next video.